All right, uh, Bible. Uh, so we're on back to the Bible thing. So there's a lot of discussion uh, in the in the second Bible one about uh, reality and things like that. So we've got the points here, which is Bible is a revised document. We then entered into a free will versus agency discussion. And we also try to figure out what the hell Peterson actually means when he uses certain words, because he is not using the dictionary definition of certain words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the, the, maybe we'll start off with the deciphering Peterson thing first, and then we'll go to the free will versus agency. And then we'll talk about how the Bible is a revised document. So deciphering Peterson is, uh, in, in the 12, uh, book of 12 rules, he has, there's a thing where he says atheism, uh, let me actually pull up the exact quote because it, uh, is something that will add context to any listeners. Uh, all right. Does it mean that what we see is dependent on our religious beliefs? Who is the punk typing? Not me. <laughs> me <to you. laughs> all right. Uh, does that mean, uh, okay. Does that mean that what we see is dependent on our religious beliefs? Yes. And what we don't see as well. You might object, but I'm an atheist. No, you're not. Uh, and then he then talks about how, how he doesn't actually, and in various interviews, how he's talked about, you don't believe, he doesn't believe atheism exists. Uh, and in it, even he says about atheism, he implies at the end uh, with these words, which are in a connected paragraph, you don't understand anything. You didn't even know that you were blind. Uh, so this is on page 164, I think, of uh, 12 Rules of Life. It's in chapter 4. And it's just like, well, what is he talking about? Uh, so you pop up the definition of like atheism. And it's disbelief or lack of belief in the existence of God or gods. I mean, that's the thing. Atheism. I submit. A, a, a non. Ah, oh, is he going? Yeah. So, yeah, it's it getting is. too late for me. All right. No All right. I'll this, listen to uh, you guys later. Okay. Bye. En enjoy your work. <laughs> yeah. So, then atheism is like it's the, the lack of belief in a deity, right? And uh, theism is the belief in a deity, like theistic. Uh, it, it's based off the origins of the word deity. So, but deity is when you look up deity, it's like an intelligent God. It's like, so. Peterson, you can grant him that God is uh, the thing that arbitrates the rules of a system. But then that can also be a, uh, secular to an extent. Uh, so it's like, okay, and we use God in all sorts of ways. Uh, like the word God we've been using, uh, you know, twisting its definition for a ton of time. When deity is specifically uh, like a god or goddess uh, uh, or the creator and supreme being, a representation of the <laughs> goddess such as a statue of carving or divine status quality in nature. But specifically, like a god can just be, you know, like Peterson says, well, your god is whatever you value most. And if you're an alcoholic, then alcohol is your god. If you're a womanizer, the women are your god um, or whatever. But then deity, you can't say that, that the, uh, the alcohol is a deity because that alcohol is an intelligent. Right, like it, it's it's not a uh, a a creator or supreme being of of the objective world. So then it's just like, well, what does Peterson actually mean here? And it seems instead of atheism, he actually means the term secular, because atheistic is just like a category of people. Like you don't believe in uh, a deity, then then you're atheist, and and that seems to be fairly uh, good because it's like. There is no evidence for believing in deity, but you can also believe in the God or gods, and, you know, using Peterson's definition of gods. Now, secular, mm -hmm. however, is not connected with religious or spiritual matters, not subject to or bound by religious rule, not belonging or living in a monastic or other order, of or denoting slow changes in the motion. Okay, the other ones aren't related to religion. So the first two, secular, so you can definitely say, like, if you swap out secular in, in that paragraph in chapter four with atheism, or you swap out atheism for secular, then uh, it makes complete sense because you're a fool to then consider yourself secular when your entire values have been influenced by religious beliefs uh, uh, that have propagated through time. And when Peterson then, and, but 
you can also have a pushback on that, but then you have to think, well, what does Peterson actually think? Like, how does he define religion? So then Peterson defines, he said this, uh, and we looked in a few different interviews. So it mm -hmm. seems Peterson then defines, he said specifically, he considers uh, ideology as a parasite that attaches itself to religion. And just a little bit back in that chapter four, he then talks about it again. Uh, so it seems like ideology is man worship when religions worship the metaphysical. So religion is something that orientates itself around what is good and evil. Uh, when ideology uh, doesn't really have that aspect, but to some extent, because if you use the definition, then religion is an ideology. And then if you're a Christian, you could become a, uh, a, a Christian ideologue. Like these would be fitting definitions. But if you then consider ideology as man worship and religions worship the metaphysical, then you can understand a bit more about what Peterson is talking about. And then you think, well, what does he mean by metaphysical? And it seems metaphysical truth oh, hold on, is hold on. Yep. go go back sorry right. it, you, I, ideology is man worship i'm not sure if that's sorry, I, accurate sorry i should i should have uh has uh maybe is man worship or has man worship so the risk here is like when you consider what peterson then considers ideology so you consider nazism or you'll consider uh nihilism or you'll consider other like categories of that and the, the thing which is common across all the things Peterson considers an ideology is they either think that you're the ultimate God or someone some other human is the ultimate God um, uh, they don't consider that and be like a, a the meta God that is higher than anything that not is not necessarily created. okay not not necessarily because for Marxism the the God that they worship is the idea of utopia that they can create a utopic state. And so even if that requires killing of every single man that's in your, in your way, that's, they're not even working towards the betterment of some sort of aimed towards the benefit of a single man, Hitler. Uh, but for, for say Marxism, that definition doesn't, perfectly fit. I think it, it kind of works as, oh, okay, so nationalism and uh, Marxism are, or communism are both kind of not necessarily the worships of some sort of specific man or, or even the, the worship of kind of the, the aggregate of complete man. It, it's, these are both idea worships. So Everything that a person is doing is kind of devoted towards manifesting this idea. Uh, like, say, for uh, nationalism, it's trying to make this nation into the greatest nation ever before and ever to be. And so one way of doing that is to uh, wipe out any other nation that comes gets in its way. So that that's kind of an idea worship. I, I don't... There's certain like cults that uh, uh, can be, I would consider as man worship. So that, that's kind of how we kind of got to some sort of place where Peterson sees religion as kind of a aggregate of many different stories that kind of, build, that kind of uh, uh, influence our behavior and, and in a positive way or there's certain religions that will go towards a negative way. It's just a kind of a narrative structure for people to live their lives, uh, ideally for for the better. Now, and then he sees ideology as kind of a like a sliver or, or a subsection to religion, e even if it's not like the religion of Christianity. It's kind of that same, like if if religion is kind of a multi multifaceted story. Ideology is like taking one facet out of that and saying, okay, everything that drives men is towards power. Uh, uh, every man is attempting to gain more power. And then you can kind of drive a sliver out of that and say uh, for some sort of cult, like it, I'll use Scientology in, in this case, even though it's kind of probably transcended it's cult status because the, the leader has died. Uh, but at, at one point, L. Ron Hubbard was kind of the, the, the person worth uh, that everyone within that 
ideology was worshiping. So it kind of, well, there was no like idea exactly that they were working towards. It was kind of more a mystery idea that, I, I don't know. It, with like nationalism and Marxism, it's easy to kind of pinpoint wh what it is that is going on. But uh, Scientology is kind of so closed doors; it's hard to really know what they're doing. I, it, it's supposed to be, I, I guess, uh, unlocking the human potential within themselves, and they're they go about doing that by kind of the similar tactics uh, of fear mongering, such as in 1984 or in communist uh, countries, but. Anyway, I, uh, I, I think the biggest yeah, takeaway yeah, that I... hear you finally say something, John, that will piss off a certain demographic. So far, you've been completely uh, clean in all these, all these recordings, and now you've finally done it. <laughs> oh, Scientology? I don't care. <laughs> okay, uh, now, uh, I, I think the biggest takeaway from uh, our discussion that we had before was that Peterson does, as, as you said, he does not go off of the dictionary definitions for each of these different uh, terms that he uses. So like religious ideology or uh, anything like that. He, he, I, he said before that he considers himself an existentialist. So he, he looks at some sort of label that are placed on top of all of these people. And instead of taking what the label says it's supposed to mean, he's looking at, okay, everyone who's under this label is behaving in a similar fashion. And you can kind of recognize what that uh, similar fashion is. At, and then you can kind of extract from that and see that other per people are using that same, uh, are behaving in the same way as these other people. Even though these people over here, they're not calling themselves by this label. so. Uh, a, a common uh, complaint that people have with Peterson is that he overemphasizes the dangers of postmodern uh, thinking that is tied with neo-Marxism. And so people are saying, we don't consider ourselves postmodernists or, or neo-Marxists. We just care about the human rights of transgender people or of uh, people that are oppressed. And so he sees their actions that are going on and he aligns it, those actions to what he's also seen are the actions under. And so that's why he kind of labels everything postmodern neo-Marxist. It's almost like a, a kind of a throwaway that he doesn't need to think about. It's, it's like, it's funny. There should be a drinking game every time you, every, every time that uh, Jordan Peterson says postmodernist, he follows it up with neo-Marxist. I don't think I've ever heard him say postmodernist without following it up at, within like the next five seconds with uh, neo-Marxist. It's, it's kind of a, a funny, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's, a, not, it's not even a quirk. It, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a cliche now at this point. So it's like, it's, it's built into his uh, verbology. Where whenever he says one thing, it leads to the other. All right, so and you have to also consider consider that how he defines religious is very different from how the de uh, the dictionary definition of religious would be. So uh, he's said before, like uh, on this uh, interview with I think Glenn Beck. At, no, 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 it was with uh, Dennis Prager. At the very end of the interview, Dennis Prager asked him. Uh, and are you there? Uh, yeah, you, you broke up a little bit. I, I got yeah, Dennis yeah. Prager asked him and then I didn't get anything else. Yeah, he, he asked him if Jordan Peterson considers himself religious and Jordan Peterson agreed fairly easily. It wasn't like one of those things where he sidestepped quite a bit. He said, yeah, I, 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 I consider myself religious. And then uh, in another interview, people, uh, somebody has asked him, do you believe in God? And that's one of those questions that he really tries to sidestep quite a bit more than uh, all of those. And so what he kind of finally came down to when he was, uh, so 
what what he ended up def- saying was i i behave in a manner as though a god exists so he it's very different from believing in god and that's but kind of the, it, the it's so easy, like it, oh, well, hold on hold on yeah, yeah. so in in my own mind the the term religious or, or even christian that that is associated with i believe in god and so for him self that's not necessarily uh, a connection that is within himself so even by him kind of using the label i'm a christian that he's aligning himself with a lot of other pre-existing uh connections that we all have in our mind because like when he says christian oh he believes in god but that's not necessarily correct because or at least that's not necessarily specifically accurate so that that's a problem yeah for for sure because he's using these words but he's trying to redefine them in, in a way that uh best suits his purpose where he, he doesn't have to stick himself down into a, a specific little box yeah it really seems like he's running the risk of being viewed as if he's using sly and cunning to use equivocations to hide his real motives whatever they are so it's uh it, it really risks him coming across as uh disingenuous because it's such like a, a mm, yeah yeah yeah, it, uh, it, 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 I, I don't necessarily uh, see that he's doing it in order to be to hide some sort of side goal that he's doing. But I, I definitely agree with you that because he's doing this, that's going to have negative outcomes for all the people that are. I mean, th- this word religious is kind of in our zeitgeist and we have a specific amount, uh, we have a specific definition that we all kind of go by. It's c- just like what we were talking about earlier. We all are playing the game where we're agreeing upon the rules uh, or the definition of what religious is. And then he's saying, yeah, I'm religious, but he doesn't, he, he doesn't agree with the, the rules that we've assigned this word religious. Or maybe he does believe in, a, in that there is an objective Christian deity yeah. and he does believe it and he's just keeping it under wraps to achieve the largest uh, uh, audience he can without uh, getting himself boxed in. So, yeah. so that's uh, like uh, where like you need true. to give him a lot of slack in order to be able to tolerate uh, and, and to like to be able to get Peterson's wisdom, you need to offer him a lot of slack around this definition ordeal. Well, you have to at least devote the time within yourself to figure out, okay, he's using this word. Do I know what he was meaning when he's using this word? Because it doesn't seem, ex- the way he's using this word doesn't feel exactly the same way that like a Christian fundamentalist is using the word religious. Like uh, you, you have to pin him down to how he's defining these words that he's using. And mm. it, it could just be bec- he's using them in the uh, existentialist way where he's defining them based off of behavior not necessarily off of beliefs so like he behaves as somebody who believes in god but that doesn't necessarily mean that or at least he's he's saying that there's an equ- equivalency to if somebody behave okay so you can say that you believe in god but still behave as if nothing that you do matters so for him Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so <laughs> somebody will. <laughs> the time it came back, there was a pause and then there was a burp. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So somebody might say that they believe in God, but and then behave in a manner that's closer to nihilism. And so for him, he would say that their label that they're using is incorrect, or, or at least it's not accurate. So he would. I would assume not term that person as actually religious, even though they they themselves call themselves religious. That's just a a false label that they're putting on themselves to make them look better. So it's kind of like the uh, I believe in equal rights, or <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those things where people are virtue su- signaling in, in a kind of way where they're saying one thing, but they're not behaving in the exact way that 
they should be if they truly believe in this thing. And so I think that's where the confusion is with him using the word atheist there. Because he's saying that people are calling themselves atheists, though they behave in a way as if there is some sort of deity that is holding them, that is constricting their morality in some sort of way, or, or at least constricting their Okay, it's just like what you were saying that people behave in a way as if there were a God. Like, for alcoholism, there doesn't have to necessarily be a God that's within alcohol that is uh, causing us to worship it in the kind of colloquial sense because of uh, kind of feeding it into it. So, yeah, you, you really have to, especially in that paragraph, because... It, that's where it's going to be. That's where he's kind of set himself up. Okay, so like what you were saying earlier, uh, when he started out this whole kind of process, he was a very timid knight. And he, now he's kind of gotten to that high stance where he has a large following. And so if he were to write a book for all of his following, he would not have to define his words every single time because he assumes that everyone who's reading his book maybe already kind of gets the idea for what he's meaning by atheist and religious in, in, in these fashions. But it, it's, he's kind of going at it, like you were saying, it, it would have been better to have more outsiders from his own perspective uh, reading his book and, and kind of uh, criticizing it. Like so, somebody so, that's... So just for the audience, yeah, like my suggestion was to get like, say, Sam Harris to view the book and then provide feedback before it's publishing. Yeah. Because no, 12 I... Rules of Life, if you haven't read it yet, it's about 30 or 40 percent Christian uh, Christian fables and whatnot. And and so you could re it's it's indistinguishable from a book that you would consider to be a Christian book, more or less. So. I, I, I can see that, especially if, like, you were a Christian that were to read the book, you would be, whenever he's using these words, uh, you would instantly kind of, and for even people that haven't interacted with Jordan Peterson, like PewDiePie, uh, you would read this book and then associate all these things with the common zeitgeist that we have for, for these definitions already. <sighs> Yeah, it's, it's kind of a, a problem of limited uh, language that we have, perhaps. Or, or at least, yeah, it, not enough people realize. Like, I, I myself didn't really uh, come to grips with the fact that he's an existentialist, so he's not going to be... You, he's using these labels in a way that is, are, is based off of behavior, not based off of what the label itself means. So, yeah. and, and that's but, what gets him in a, a lot of trouble from like, like I was saying, uh, the, the critics of him are saying that postmodernism, postmodern neo-Marxist is kind of a, a label he's throwing onto everything, even though the, the people themselves don't uh, ex accept that label, even though they behave in a similar fashion to the people that do accept that label. label. Yeah. Yeah, so, so one of the issues here, like to run with the existential aspect is Peterson doesn't seem like, so, maybe sometimes he does it, but overall he doesn't seem to distinguish the difference between subjective and objective truth. He, he, well, the, the phrasing he'll say, well, just Gavessi and the, art, the stuff he writes about is true, but it's true from a fictional perspective, but it's still true. So it's not true in the same sense as a scientific truth, and the Bible isn't true in the same type of scientific truth. So it seems the words he's actually going for is there's objective truth, which doesn't require a witness, and then there's subjective truth, which requires a witness. So the metaphysical truth is inside the subjective truth, and it's not an objective truth, nor even a universal truth. So can so it, wait, so it can be true for an individual from their perspective. Uh, from their from their subjective relative experiential knowledge, but not true for others, and this can be delusional at times. So the thing is, just like you know, someone can profess like a religion, uh, but then it's 
universal among the like the beliefs of good and evil are universal uh are to the relative audience of the followers of that religion which is you know the people were like I, like you know either that was indoctrinated into them or then they said well which religion actually seems to fit best with my experiential uh reality that mm -hmm. i've experienced yeah so far and then i'm going to pick that religion because it seems most true but then it's mm -hmm. true only from your experiential relative subjective experience uh yeah. so so then there's always a risk here which is uh that peterson may be butting heads with which is that it's very dangerous to then uh not be stating this stuff uh clearly because otherwise because even historically like people have done horrific things in the name of religion because they really believe things were true but yet they turn out to be delusional uh mm -hmm. and and there needs to be an acknowledgement that uh a subjective truth to some extent is always relative uh and you try and get the most universal relative truth as possible because that's going to be the religion uh, that wins whereas an objective truth it doesn't matter on how many witnesses agree with it it's still going to be true now with both versions of truth truth still revises itself and maybe peterson is implying this but he's it seems he's never actually stated this so in the book he <clears> says uh i'm gonna i'm gonna mute you to prevent the oh. coughing from coming out <laughs> all right the religion is so peterson writes uh just a few paragraphs back from what i read earlier is religion is instead about proper behavior it's about what plato called the good a genuine religious acolyte isn't trying to formulate accurate ideas about the objective nature of the world although he may be trying to do that he's striving instead to be a good person right now the thing is is that uh iman like so with plato and aristotle and those philosophers it was pretty much uh their version of science was ask everybody around find out what was common among all those answers and then that is true but the thing is is that they could all be like all be fools uh or you know what is true for their little society may not actually be true in a different society um at all because you know different societies or different environments may actually have other th other gods so rule makers of that environment that then reward different behaviors because you need different behaviors in different environments now uh so then and then this is kind of what Immanuel Kant wrote about in the critiques of reason which is just because you can argue something doesn't make it true uh so then that was like I think the like Immanuel Kant was one of the founding fathers of of science of, of scientific uh thinking and uh there was many but he was one of the big ones and that critique of reason was like his his that one was a really big one so it's like the idea of uh the now the establishment of objective truth and subjective truth and it's fascinating because you go like before immanuel kant and people like they they like aristotle like true was actually really like to the extent of you know go around and ask everybody and find out what it was common and then that's true but before that the true was just what you personally believed uh so it's like you know the word true has like changed and revised over time now it's saying the same thing with religions like one of the things that then puts peterson in an interesting position is like his view of christianity is this religion that has pulled pieces from all these other prehistoric non-christian religions uh and then it's come up to be like the the best result of that he goes at the foundation of morality of western values kind of thing which is a little bit funny because it seems like it then says well that's the foundation that then caused western values rather than it was the bible is written as a reflection over what values were working so the thing is is that you then had oh we didn't add this in the notes so you had this yin yang of the ought and is um maybe you can explain that a little bit because i gotta run to the toilet <laughs> there we go yeah. all right okay well uh, yeah okay I'll, I'll go off of that and then i'll go backwards to uh i, I think Peterson's main uh, co contrast, uh, main conflict with, with your ar argument. So, the, yeah, in order to kind of derive a, an ought, we, we talked a little bit about it earlier, it, it has to be kind of based off of the is. All, all of the is's that have occurred in the past throughout all of existence and all the is's that you can kind of witness through 
your your eyes. Now these are all you know in order to be in order to get the ought still though, you can't just have the is because we as subjective humans we have to look and realize, okay, this is is. These are all facts here. And these are all feelings here. And so we have to see, okay, these facts cause bad feelings. We don't like that. These facts over here, these cause good feelings. We, we do like that. Okay, so these are all is's that we're able to subjectively see and recognize. And so that that is our basis of morality because we kind of aggregate all of those together all throughout time and, and even utilizing our imagination as with uh, 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 Dostoevsky. It, it's kind of, they're fictional stories, but we're, we, we can still derive useful information out of them in order to uh, influence our behavior into the future. So that's causing... So all of these is's that we've recognized are, are causing ought and ought for what we should do. And then if we continue doing that over and over and over again, because this ought that we do, oh no, maybe it results in a bad outcome. Oh, that's not very good. Okay, we'll have to add that to the is's. That, uh, we'll have to add that to our series of facts. And so now since we're subjective humans, we're able to recognize, okay, this expected outcome occurred. And, and so I have to create a new ought. So now take that. I have to now take that previous uh, negative outcome into account when I'm going forward. When I'm going forward, so um, that that's not exactly to say that you can derive an ought directly from an is, because in order to recognize ises, in able in order to recognize facts, you have to not be an is you kind of have to be an observer of uh, of this and so you can't without the observer that's able to kind of recognize all these things you're <laughs> you're 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 a dead you're in a dead state it's it's like the universe prior to humans existence who knew that there was a universe how how did was it, it's not like you can prove that there was a universe prior to our own existence because in order to do that, you have to exist in order to prove whether or not something exists. It, it, okay, and, and now... Uh, and uh, just okay, to add okay. this, yeah. this bit, which is one of the other things, though, is uh, the, the is-is. Like, you could be just studying something unrelated, and then suddenly, bang, you, you turn out to, like, you know, it's like... Like, you know, discovering the earth is actually round instead of flat. It wasn't something that was derived out of a, uh, an ought. It was just like, well, that happened to happen, right? And then after that, uh, then we can start deriving, like some things with that influence the oughts are just accidentally discovered. So it's not like all the no. oughts are directing the isers. The isers, but we use like, it seems the all the isers to then influence the oughts. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, and now, I, I think that was kind of a, a rudimentary explanation of how pragmatism works, because uh, Jordan Peterson is a pragmatist. He doesn't believe that there, we as uh, limited beings are unable to recognize or are unable to know anything objectively true because for in order for something to be objectively true it has to exist without the observer there and so oh that's an objective truth right there you're kind of proving yourself wrong because you're the observer and you're seeing it that it mean that what whether or not there's an objective truth there what we have currently is the subjective observation of whatever is there. It, for all we know, we could be living inside of a matrix and, and everything, uh, we're just a brain in a jar. And so in order to live in, in the world, we have to not rely upon whatever objective truth is, be, is because we, we can't exactly, uh, rec uh, we're, we're unable to, have an objective truth because we exist. Uh, it, a, a, so the next best thing is to base all of our oughts 
off of everything that we recognize and, and uh, see to exist. So um, if Galileo looks up and, and sees that Jupiter has uh, orbiting moons around it, he recognizes, okay, from my perspective now, that could mean that we ourselves are not on a flat uh, plane. We're on a, some sort of global sphere, just like the moon and, and Jupiter and, and the things orbiting Jupiter. Okay, this is a new truth now to, to all of the universe. Okay, it's not, it's not a, an objective truth that has suddenly occurred all, all of a sudden. It's a subjective truth that is now all of a sudden occurred and, and for the for the uh, w the witnesses, the, the the inhabitants of the universe kind of have been able to look into the universe and see something and then recognize it. Uh, uh, okay, so the the uh, as you're only able to recognize these certain what, what appear to be objective truths based off of your limited situation. So if you were to go back in time and, and to tell the people uh, that, uh, uh, say, let's say around the time of Genesis, so 6,000 years, years ago or so, and, and to tell them the world is not flat, I know it looks flat to uh, everybody here, but it's not flat. You're on a ball. You're on a big ball, and it's rotating around the sun that you see up in the air, in the sky. The sun doesn't go back and forth, uh, or not back and forth, but around and around. Uh, it's the Earth happens to spin, and it also is going around the sun. Now, it sounds so absurd just when you say that as well. Like no one's <laughs> going to believe you if you say it that way. I know. <laughs> and, and it's and it's not like something that you can prove to be true to them either. For for them, you're you're a crackpot because what you're saying does not fit with everything that's observable evidence for them at that time. So you can't. You have to rely upon what observable evidence you have at, at this time, along with the evidence that other people have found as well. So like scientists, like so uh, sociologists, like. Uh, Bricklayers, like you, you kind of have to rely upon all of these things because you can't objectively prove every single thing yourself. And even if you did, you don't know if it's you, if it's objectively true or not. It could just appear to be objectively true, and you're misleading yourself in in, in your own fashion. You have to have a malleable idea of what truth is in order to function in the world because if you're if you ever become steadfast in some sort of objective truth that you have that limits you from being able to surpass it because at this point in time you're limited by your own limitations by your own understanding of the universe and so you can't surpass that unless you have an understanding that, okay, what I know at this point in time may not be completely accurate, but it's useful right now. And I can keep on doing this until I, and I can excel from this point up into a point where I learn something new. And this new thing will now have to be integrated into my understanding of what is true. And, and from there, I can move up another point. And then you can keep on doing that over and over and over again, and you're just adding in all of these new ises that you're recognizing, and then uh, able to progress upwards from there. So if you were, say, Isaac Newton, uh, you were, you could say that you, your understanding of the universe is objective truth. This is it. This is exactly how the universe works. We don't need to go any further with this. Then say Einstein comes along and though it, it, it got us, I, uh, what is the quote that I, I think both Newton and then Einstein said, uh, if I see far, it is because I stand on the shoulders of giants. So Einstein derived his theory of relativity because Newton's theories were uh, utilized into the world and they 
didn't quite fit properly. So they, Newton had his theory for how the universe works and Einstein and, Einstein and plenty of others used that theory for a long time up until the point where it no longer works. And so from that, you have to derive the, the theory of relativity. And then from that, you have to derive quantum mechanics. And then from that, perhaps string theory. And then per, after string theory, you could have something else that goes even further. You can't ever have this objective truth because as we are using what we think to be objective truths, it may turn out to be that, oh, that's, turns out we were wrong, guys. Re, re, we got to say everybody else in the past was wrong, and, and we now are right, and we're always going to be right. It, if you're believing in this thing that is objective truth, believing that you have the capability of knowing objective truth, you're setting yourself up for failure or you're setting yourself up to look like a fool. I, so I, I'm the, not sure the, that's the case because it seems that people who believe in the pursuit of objective truth are those who are willing to revise the subjective truth. Because if you're just stuck with subjective truth, then you would believe truth ends with your perception. No, no, no. For the pragmatist point of view, it doesn't end with your perception. It's a tool. Just like every other thing that we interact with is a tool that leads us towards discovering that objective truth. Even though, and then that, ne that next level of truth that we add to our tool belt, that allows us to kind of get to the next level of subjective truth. That we're, or we're aiming, we're always aiming towards understanding the objective universe as, as it is, but being limited by our own drives and desires and, and uh, uh, misconceptions and, and our own biology and, and our own uh, feelings for how we want the universe to be. We're going to be blinding ourselves. And we're, it, it, it may be that we have this idea of what objective truth is and something new comes along and you'll say, that doesn't fit with what I know to be true. So that's obviously some sort of lie. And you're you're hallucinating, yeah. Just like with the Catholic Church, you become a, an orthodoxy, where they know because of the Bible. Oh, the the Earth is flat and it's stagnant; it, it's not moving. The sun goes over. If you were to say anything other than that, we're going to crucify you or or the equivalent i mean it, in our day and age it's just you're you're a crackpot oh you don't believe in climate change you're a crackpot you're, you're an idiot you you don't believe in the the scientific truth and, and that's the thing we we have to have this conversation between what, okay this scientist over here he he's got this understanding of what from his own ob observations that he's run in and that he's devoted his life towards, he's come to this specific truth. And this scientist over here, he's done the same thing, but they clash. They can't both have objective truth. We have to take both of these things into account and try and figure it out from there. And even if our conclusion is incorrect, if it's useful into in getting us to the next step, then that's a good enough truth for our needs. That's pragmatism. That and that's uh, that. That's the theory of evolution. That that's what evolution is. Is we're always working at uh, becoming more capable. And even if like we get to a point where, okay, our eyes are extremely perfect, almost we're able to detect all these ripe fruits and snakes all around us and stuff. But and. Th over time, because of that, we've discovered that, oh, there's more, there's more wavelengths to the, the, the spectrum than just what we can see. Okay, well, we're limited by what we can see, but we can still, because we know that there's invisible wavelengths to us, we can still utilize that. And we can create machines that uh, just uh, that are able to read those wavelengths and, and so on and so forth. Cool. I don't think you that, can ever get that objective truth. 
Yeah. You well, can just I, get I, close and then whatever works. That's that's what yeah. you're stuck with. I, th I think there may be a, a, a bit of uh, conflation there because um, like if we, I, I think we both acknowledge uh, truth is always your best working theory, right? Like it's, yeah. it's a running working theory, but it's always the best one. So, it, and that's why it can be revised. Uh, so then there's, but then you still have the idea of, okay, objective is a definition is uh, uh, of a person or the judgment, but it's not, so not influenced by personal feelings or opinions is considering representing facts. Uh, and then you have also subjective, which is based on inf or based on or influenced by personal feelings, the taste or opinion. So you can think of it, you know, it has a witness, doesn't have a witness. So then, uh, you know, even an objective truth can still be the best running theory, but it's still something that is still true, no matter if no one's uh, observing it, at least that's the assumption. When a subjective truth, like, you know, when the most obvious subjective truth is feelings, right? As soon as you perish, then your feelings are no longer objectively true. Is it depends on your on you know the witness? Or if you if you ask me about it, then uh you know I would have to communicate okay. how I feel about something um, to you. You can't just uh, like say for instance like Peterson stances on certain things. We can only assume on that. We don't actually know what he's thinking. So he has subjective truths mm -hmm. that we can't objectively uh, verify without his input. But then we can mm -hmm. objectively verify, you know, what goes up must go down. And then that's true no matter. And I mean, like, sure, maybe that's our best running working theory. Maybe for some strange reason, someone throws a ball up and then it just continues to going up, right? Uh, but the thing is, is that it's uh, reasonable enough to then assume that continues even when no one's watching uh, kind of thing. So. Mm -hmm. Now. The uh, Peterson's argument against uh, the attempt of objective thinking for how we, as our God. So, okay, we want objective God. By definition, objective truth is something that does not take into account the feelings of the subjective viewers. That's so you can have objective truth that is that. So you can have objective truth that is terrible and is torturous to all of the subjects within it, but it's still true. I mean, you can create a, a smallpox uh, mixed with some sort of, ex you can, you can I, I forget his exact example, but it, it's, a, it's a perfectly valid scientific experiment to create these two things. And that's, that's what's frightening is because if you're attempting to create things that are not best for the subjects that are creating them, then that's why would you want to go down that pathway? It, it seems like it's not an it's not a subjectively true or a Darwinistically true pathway for success because if it's a if you discover something that ultimately kills you in, in the end and makes it so that there's no more life in the universe to witness anything objectively true, that's not a very useful uh, truth to learn. Well, okay, well, there's going to be a difference here, which is like, for instance, uh, like say you discover the atomic bomb and then someone blows everybody out off. And that's a, that's a problem of an ought. That's not a problem of an is. Uh, but... Uh, like it, yeah, it's a problem that I, I yeah. So I think uh, because the, 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 that type of argumentation can be used then to then say, let's stop putting research into the issues that men are facing in society. Let's stop putting yeah. research into mental health issues for men. Uh, let's stop putting research into things we don't wish to know because it could harm a certain demographic or then mm -hmm. show things like, let's stop recording demographic statistics of uh, high crimes in Sweden because we don't want to offend anybody. Uh, so you can just then start saying that, well, these things are things we ought not to know. But then the thing is, it's like, well, if you then put that into the objective realm or into science, then you, sh you should be banned from science, it seems, because 
science like you know like the shapiro thing like fats don't care about your feelings like yeah you shouldn't be in the business of science just to verify what you wish to be true or want to be true you should be in the business yeah. of science of trying to actually disprove the things that you actually hope <laughs> that's why the the jewish culture of being kind of nomads that were all continually going throughout so many different countries that were not themselves and, and discussing things and uh, treating each other, treating your neighbor a, as yourself. These are all very useful tools in the success for the human race. Because even if you have a country that is just like that, where they, we don't want to do any research into uh, IQ differences between any subsection or, or groups of people. That's not something we need to know. If another country that, that's separate from that does put in all that research and then utilizes that knowledge in order to benefit everyone within that country, this country over here, uh, <laughs> over here will flourish and this country over here will fall. That is kind of the, uh, uh, the survival of the fittest. That, that's the evolutionary, evolutionary law. So it's still a subjectively true thing but it's uh, okay no subjectively true is something that aids life i, I think that was like a, a nietzsche a nietzsche quote is truth serves life and so there's things that don't serve life or the betterment of mankind you you or, because for uh nietzsche the Ubermensch is kind of his I, highest ideal, which is the, the progressing forward or becoming more capable of evolving into something more complex. That's his idea. Okay, th this is from very limited perspective of Nietzsche. I've only read uh, part of Thus Spake Zarathustra and uh, other things, but I, I believe that's his highest ideal and that's what he's aiming towards. So whatever brings us further or towards the ubermensch is the highest form of truth. Anyway, uh, I have to go, actually. But, um, so uh, do, you want to, do you want to respond to that at all before I have to go, though? Yeah, yeah, it seems, uh, it seems fine. Like, if you then consider, because, uh, you know, it's, it is true that uh, what is that what we see is influenced by our value system, right? So the like to say subjective truth is then what what values uh, life is then true. Uh, but then the issue is uh, like some things like, you know, if you talk about, well, let's get a whole bunch of people to witness something that then doesn't benefit the life, like the ball going up and down, that's still going to be driven about the value system that they have, whether or not it's meaningful, yeah. whether or not they even notice it. Um, exactly. So uh, that's... What uh, I think Jonathan Haidt really is, his research is extremely fascinating for, for me because there's certain situations where two different subjects will witness the same occurrence and get different conclusions. And so because of that, you have to, yeah, and then you have to put both of those conclusions and fit those two together. Because if we are th this type of society that says, Okay, what everyone by themselves thinks is true, that they just can follow along with that truth and, and take it with where, wherever it leads them. That's not going to be very useful as a society because we need to be able to discuss things with each other to root out, okay, is the reason that this person witnessed or has this certain truth because they have a mental deficiency? Is that, is that the reason? Or does this person we have to discuss these things and using whatever we have as evidence so uh the the scientific method is an extremely useful way to do these things but there's still certain things that are not able to be perceived by the scientific method so there's the uh idea of the, there, uh, there's a lot of different things but i i do believe a lot of them have been derived from uh, our, our biology, but it's not like you can go down to where our bi biological level is because there's such thing as emergent behavior. So 
after you've kind of taken this foundation of biology, you've kind of expressed it outwards into the, like, yeah, we have words, and but they're not real you can look at. <laughs> like like nope. language, we have, we, we, we can't look at the word word. We, we can look at what we wrote down, that, that's the word word, but it's not like we can examine it to understand what's, what is this, what does this mean? Because it, it's something that exists only within our collective unconscious, as Jung would say. Uh, it, all these ideas that kind of float around within us that are very real to us because we behave and utilize these false things, if you consider a word false, uh, and we utilize these things in order to better us because we're able to communicate better through this thing, even though it doesn't exist. The word words don't exist exactly unless you want to derive them down to vocal intonations that are expressed towards each other. But it's not like. Anyway, sorry, I have to go now. So. <laughs> All right, cool. See you, John. Uh, right. Thanks so much. Yeah. Enjoy whatever you're up to. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Cool. Alrighty. Uh, so I think that was fairly good for the subjective versus uh, objective truth. So just to recap, the deciphering Peterson was ideology is man's worship, religions worship the metaphysical. There, there was some pushback against that. Uh, which was why we got into this objective versus objective with with the Marxist thing. Um, but it seems like Peterson's desire to not be considered an ideology is then because he could then be considered a cult leader or where he could be considered the God, uh, because that generally happens in the things he considers to be ideologies. But then he considers Marxism to be one. But then he, I think if you consider Marxism to be implemented, then you put some people above other people, but then it's generally also like a value, like you put the value of compassion maybe above higher than others, but is it really compassionate or are you just really putting other groups and are those groups actually just yourself? Because it seems the way that Marxism is actually implemented is you find a way to then prop your group association up at the detriment of the people who aren't in your in-group um, to an extent. Uh, so then it still seems like it's something which is, uh, you know, for men, by men, rather than something that then aligns itself uh, with, you know, a higher God that then promotes uh, the pursuit of uh, revision, I guess. So we have uh, religions worship the meta metaphysical, and then a the metaphysical truth is subjective truth, not an objective truth, nor even a universal truth. So can be true for an individual from the subjective relative experiential knowledge but not true for others then this can be delusional at times so you could have you know, someone acting on a religion and then they do something horrific and then you have someone else acting on a different religion and then doing something good and then when you actually get them together then they battle with their ideas and then one actually comes out victorious so you can have methods of what associates good and evil but then they battle each other out and they revise um, and it seems as the, the, the thing that is necessary for that is then the pursuit of objective truth, because if you always want to find out what is objective, then you're willing to revise your subjective truths. Um, and that is what's going to cause revision and cause the best ideas to win and cause free speech and all the rest. Now, the way that Peterson is using atheism seems to be he's intending to use the word secularism because when you compare the definitions and the usage, that seems to be more accurate. Because again, atheism is the lack of belief in a deity and theism is the belief in a deity. And it doesn't seem I have found anywhere where Peterson is actually considering a deity to be present, like an intelligent God that exists in the objective realm, like the realm outside of you know human existential belief uh, kind of thing. So, okay. Um, and there's a difference like, you know, okay, a uh, you know certain gods uh, do seem to exist in the objective world when you consider spirits to be the rules and then gods to be what is the kind of the rule maker the capital G God to be the rule maker um, when the lowercase G's are the different uh, sets of rules battling it out 
uh, or, or competing when the capital G God is the, the guy who, or the entity that created all the other gods. Um, but then uh, you can still use that as, as a metaphorical analogy when the capital, like the deity uh, version of it is something that is intelligent. It is something that is an entity. It's not just something that you can use as a metaphor. Uh, 